Alrighty, in this video we're going to look at a couple of scene setup things in Maya in order to um, try to match up a background plate and get some uh, proper lighting and shading uh, that will correspond with you know, a background image. So uh, what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to create a camera. So we're going to go down and create cameras. I'm just going to create a regular old camera. Uh, then I'm going to look through that camera. So let's go there. And then I'm just going to kind of zoom up and out here so that I can see my, uh, my world playing. And uh, that'll be fine for now. Because the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a background image. So if you go over to the camera attributes over here in your camera shape, you can see there is image plane. And I want to create an image plane. And then from here, I want to select an image. And pardon my messy uh, desktop and everything. But here I've got an image of a desk. Great. So uh, one thing that you want to set up before you start really doing anything with this is you want to set up the, uh, the image so that it matches the resolution gate. And at the same time, you want to set up your resolution so that it matches the image. Now you can see that my image here is uh, 600 by 448. Normally, I'd say I would go with a higher resolution image. But since I'm going to be making a few test renders here, I would end up with something low resolution anyway. So that'll be fine for this one. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to change my uh, width and height to 600 by 448. We'll call that a deal. And I'm just going to leave that for there. Um, you know, like I said, if you start with a larger image, if you have something that's, you know, 4, 5, 8, 10, 12 megapixel, you can always put in the exact dimensions here and then turn on maintain width and height ratio. And then you can just change the width to something more manageable, 1280 or 960 or whatever the case may be. And uh, it will automatically adjust the height to match. So that way you don't have to be rendering um, multi megapixel images every test render you make. In this case, I've got something with low resolution, so it's not really going to matter. Um, and then the next thing I'll do after I close that is I'll go over here and under placement, I'm just going to click uh, fit to resolution gate. Not, not going to make much of a difference since I had adjusted that. And uh, you can go up here and click this resolution gate so that you see it here. Uh, and that will kind of help you just get everything aligned. So uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the, um, the ground plane here just to kind of roughly align with the perspective of the desk. So let's see. I need to in, didn't need to go that far, and I'm going to flatten out my perspective just a little bit, and I'm not going to spend the time to get this 100% exactly dead on, uh, we're just going to go with a close enough kind of scenario here, because um, we're just looking at putting a ball in the middle of the table in this case, so, um, you know, something about like that, and what I'm doing is I'm looking for the edges of the desk to correspond uh, with, the, um, with the grid, you can see it's a little off here, and that's because oh, a lot of that's just because of uh, the placement of everything. So let's just I'm gonna adjust just a little bit more here, and then we'll call it a deal. And that's actually looking pretty decent. So I'm going to leave that as is. Uh, and then I'm not going to really touch my camera after that. I'm going to leave my camera in place, and from that I'm going to go and just build a little bit of simple geometry. So I'm going to go and make just a really simple polygon plane. And actually, for this one, that's it. That's all I'm going to make um, as far as my environment. I could go and uh, extend these edges up and kind of get something that fits um, a little bit more with the, uh, with the shape of the desk. But we're just going to be in the middle of the desk in this case. Not a big deal. I could also um, you know, add a back wall here if I wanted you know, a ball to bounce off and hit the back wall or roll or just be placed near the back wall. In this case, I'm just going to put it in the middle of the screen. And everything is going to apply. Uh, if you wanted to add in more geometry to to kind of um, expand this scene a little bit, if you wanted, you could you know add in geometry for the front lip here and the drawers and everything. Uh, if you wanted to put something inside the drawers, but really for what we're doing here, this will get the idea across. And then if you want to expand upon that, you know you can go ahead and do that relatively easily. All right, so since I've got that, I'm also going to go in and create a sphere. So let's just go ahead and drop in a little sphere right here. Doesn't need to be very big. And I'm just going to get my move tool and move it up. And actually here, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in. I don't want this to be intersecting the ground at all. So we'll just put it right up on top there. And yeah, that'll do it. Now let's get this back to full screen. So um, I'm going to start here just by, um, by creating a material that will attach to, um, to this plane. And it's going to pull in the background image. And it's going to let shadows fall across the background image. Now, this is not designed for doing 
uh, multi-pass compositing or really um, highly controlled things where you're going to go in and, and do your compositions in, uh, in Nuke or in After Effects, whatever the case may be. This is just to get something in here that looks plausible and, and fits relatively well. Um, and actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and I'm also going to add in a light. So uh, one thing that you want to gauge when you're setting up environments like this is, you know, where's your light coming from and uh, what kind of light source we're looking at. So in this case, we can see that we have a lot of light coming from the left and it's large and very open and diffused. You can see that the shadows um, on the ground here are very spread uh, as they get even, you know, a couple of inches away from the base of the uh, leg of the table here. They really spread a lot. A little bit tighter back in the back, but that's largely because uh, we're getting a lot of uh, just occlusion in that corner. So what we're likely dealing with here is a window. This isn't uh, a, a light source that's something like a bulb or something like that. It's a large uh, open light, so we're going to go with a window. And uh, to, to recreate that, we're going to use a simple um, uh, area light here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put in an area light. And I'm going to start by lifting it up, and I'm going to rotate it so it's roughly facing. I'm going to actually rotate it down just a little bit, even though the, the actual window is going to be flush with the wall, so it's going to be vertical. Uh, but I'm just going to use a little bit of kind of trickery to get this uh, looking pretty decent here. I'm going to make it a little bit wider than it is tall, uh, but I'm not going to make it as big as the entire window, just because uh, we're going to start to hit issues with the um, the uh, the need to add more samples to the lighting in order to get it to look good, and we're not going to go through all that right now. Um, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to go to my render settings. We're going to render using Mental Ray, and let's just get a real quick first pass at this so we can see kind of what it is we're looking at. All right, so we can see that we've got a lot of bright light hitting this table right here. This isn't going to be an issue, really, because... Um, we're not going to end up seeing the material on this table. All we're really going to see is uh, the ball and the shadows um, off of the ball onto the table. So um, that's okay. I would think what I am going to do is I'm going to move it up. And you can do one of two things with, uh, with area lights. You can either increase the strength or you can increase uh, the scale of it. And they're both going to increase how powerful the light is. So um, they're also, however, going to have an effect on the shadows. So just increasing the, the actual strength is going to keep your shadows um, at the current sharpness level that they're at. Uh, so if you like how sharp your shadows are here, these shadows look a little too sharp. Um, so I wouldn't want to just increase the brightness. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go and increase the scale. So let's grab this guy. Again, I'm going to go to my scale tool. Let's we'll just make it, and I'm pretty big here, just so we can get an idea. Let's go ahead and fire off another render. And in this case, we should see, yep, now it's going all the way across. It's hitting the ball. We're getting a real nice open spread here. In this case, I think it's a bit too much now. So I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. And we'll try one more render. I'm, I'm not bothering to save these just because we're moving relatively quickly here. Now, now this is starting to look okay. Uh, we'll see that we get the spread, but it's looking, it, it's really difficult to tell because our, um, our number of uh, light rays is really low, it's set to one. So I'm going to bump that up to, let's go to six. And then we'll give this another test render here. Actually, this one we'll save since we're getting closer. So we'll save that. We'll render. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit better. And again, you can just kind of bump this up as you need to. Let's go up to 16. I'm not going to go up too high here just because we're still testing things. Um, and there we go. Now, now we can get an idea. So let's save that one. And so there was our uh, set at 1. Yeah, there's set at 1. And there it is set at 16. So that's, that's definitely better. Now we're going to put in some fill in here so that it's not going to be um, entirely uh, hard uh, dark here on this side. So that'll be fine. Uh, one thing that I am noticing, however, though, is that my light is coming more from slightly in front of the table on the, on the real world, on the photo here. So let's move this forward. And I'm actually going to also rotate it just a little bit. Again, we're, this would be flush with a wall, but I'm trying to fake things a bit. So we'll go with that. And we'll do one more quick test render here. There you go. Now you can see that the, the direction of these shadows is a little bit more in line with what's there. I probably uh, went a little bit too far, so we'll split the difference, pull it back just a little bit, and we'll save that one. And we'll do one last render, and then we'll move on to the actual desk here. Yeah, and I think that's looking pretty good. 
All right, we'll worry about some fill lights and some other things here in a moment as well. But let's uh, start by looking at, uh, at the material that we're going to put on this. So I'm going to hop down to um, get this. I've got a lot of stuff in here, and I don't want to see it. So we're just going to grab this guy, and I'm going to create a new material. And we'll start with... Um, a mental ray material and you may not see these MIP materials here so just uh, that, that's just a note um, if you don't have these in there is just a uh, they're hidden and there's a Mel script that you uh, that you can just type in here and then you have to restart Maya uh, I'll link that in the description to the video or I'll just uh, type it in in the description to the video so that you can just copy and paste it so if you don't see any of these MIP uh, shaders these are production shaders um, you know, you can just go in and, and grab them. So, um, all right. So let's see here. I'm going to start. Let's, um, let's go in here. I'm just going to clear this stuff out. And let's start with, actually, I'm going to select this guy, sorry, and assign new material. And for right now, I'm just going to put a Lambert shader on there. Um, that, that will work for right now. And let's just move this, oops, move this up out of the way. And uh, we'll need to do a couple of things. We'll need to um, we'll need to project here. So uh, let's actually sorry, let's do this. Um, I'm going to need a camera map node. So you already typed in camera here. So uh, since I've got that, let's just go ahead and drop it down there. So there's our camera map node, and that's going to allow the image to project through the camera onto the geometry. So we'll need that. And the other thing that I'm going to need, let's go ahead and type in MIP here, and I'm just going to get a matte shadow node. So let's take that and drop it down here as well. Okay, and um, <clears throat> now if we go to this uh, camera map node, you'll see that it doesn't have anything populated in the map yet. So uh, what we have to do is um, we have to put in a uh, an image. So let's go ahead into the map here, and we will grab our same desk image and plug that in. Oops. Got that now. So we've got our, our image now going into there. And uh, the next thing that we'll need to do is uh, we'll want to plug this camera map into the into the background for the matte shadow. Because otherwise we could take this matte shadow here and here let's select this and right click here and assign that material. And if we go ahead and render this, um, you'll see that we have a little bit of an issue, and that's that we just get blackness, and that's because there is nothing. Uh, in the background for that to actually render. So let's go ahead and uh, close that down. Uh, so what I'm going to do is select this matte shadow and then I'm going to middle mouse click on this camera map one and we'll just drag that up, drop it under background and then we'll just go ahead and render again. So there you go. That quickly you've got um, you've got your background out and, uh, and you've got something that's definitely more plausible for your actual rendered image. And actually, you know, I, t I take it back, I didn't need this Lambert uh, material on here at the beginning. I just out of force of habit, I created one so that I have something on there. So you really don't need to, you don't need to make that at the beginning. So if you're um, following along uh, or watching this and then following along, you don't have to create that. Uh, you can just go straight in and then apply your matte shadow uh, material to it. So uh, the next thing that I'm going to do uh, before I add in any actual fill is I'm going to turn on uh, Final Gather and I'm going to use this image uh, even though it's not a high dynamic range image, uh, to get in some uh, some environment light. So let's go to our render options, and we'll go to indirect lighting, and I'm going to turn on image-based lighting. I'll just click create, and I'll turn on final gather, and uh, here under image name, I'm just going to go ahead and grab that same desk image. Uh, we'll put that in there. It's not going to map correctly, it's not going to look great, but it will give us something here. So um, let's go ahead and save this render. And we'll do another one here. And now you can see we actually start to get a little bit of fill. And that's going to be based off of two things. And here we can actually uh, zoom this in a little bit so that we can see it better. Okay, so uh, here, let's save that one as well. So here is our previous render. You can see it's totally dark. And then here we start to get something filling in. And that's going to be something much more in line with what we want. And this is happening for two reasons. One, it's sitting on um, a plane that has this image mapped to it, so we're getting a little bit of bounce. And then it also has uh, that environment wrapped around it that's creating some fill. 
And you have two ways that you can control the overall you know, method brightness for this. Uh, the first is your primary diffuse scale, and that's going to be based off of any you know, real physical lights that you have here. So if I take this, you can see that the value is set to 1, um, and that's all that the slider will do here. You can see, okay, 1, that's all around. But you can increase this because this goes into high dynamic range. So if I take this, I'm going to bump it up really high. It's going to be too far, but just so you can see it, uh, let's go ahead and render again. And boom, we can see, okay, wow, that's really blown out, and that's really not quite what we want. We might want a little bit of boost from that. It's not that much. I'm going to put maybe 1.25, and let's save this one, and we'll render again. And now we're starting to get a little bit more fill here. We'll save that one as well. So you can see we've got, um, there it is, over bright. There it is. So here, let's get the bright one out of there. So. Now we can actually just see the difference. So there, there it is at um, at 1.25, and there it is at 1. You can see we're definitely getting a little bit more of that fill coming in. It's uh, it's also filling out the uh, area on the desk a little bit. And then I'm going to also go in here to our secondary diffuse scale, and that's going to be any uh, bounces, uh, when light bounces around. Uh, and I'm going to turn my secondary diffuse bounces up to 1, um, and then let's go ahead and render again here. And this is so that we get a little bit more light play in the shadowy areas. So let's save that one. So see, it's a pretty subtle change from here to here. But we can also go in and increase this uh, secondary diffuse scale. In this case, we're not getting much out of it. So let's go ahead and ramp it really high. I'm going to put it up to 25 again, just so you can kind of see the idea of you know what it looks like when it's too much. And actually, gosh, we're not getting hardly anything out of it. So. Um, we have to increase our number of bounces here. I'll try this again. And then you can see we're starting to get a little bit more fill in the shadow areas, but uh, really we're not getting much out of this, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to set it at 10 just to give a little bit of fill so we're not uh, totally dark. And I'm going to leave my bounces at 2, and then we'll go ahead and render it one last time. And we'll call that done here. So let's zoom in so you can see. So here, um, you go through the progression. So there it is, just with our... Um, area light in the corner. There it is when we add um, a little bit of, uh, of uh, global illumination and that, or final gather rather, and that environment, uh, the image based environment. There it is when we adjust it, and there it is. Well, we're not getting anything hardly. You can see a tiny bit in the center, and I don't even know if that's going to show up when you're encoding or when this is encoded on YouTube, but uh, there's a little tiny bit of extra brightness inside of the shadow area. But overall, you know, you can see we're definitely getting this filled out a little bit more. And, uh, and, and it's working pretty well. Now, if you wanted that shadow to be even lighter, you could go in and add something like a, an ambient light or something like that. But keep in mind, if you put it in an ambient light, um, that's going to also brighten everything else and give you something eh, just a little bit uglier. Uh, in, in general, it's going to decrease your contrast and, and just kind of blow out the image. Uh, but anyway, hope this is helpful. Uh, this should get you at least started for, uh, for creating a, uh, a plausible photo composite here inside of Maya. Um, again, let's just go over real quickly to review. Um, we've got the, the things that we need here are the um, you need the camera map, which is this one, camera map, and you need the matte shadow. And then basically, what you're doing is you're taking the camera map and you're plugging that into the background on the matte shadow, and then you're plugging in your image into the camera map. And this matte shadow then applies to your whatever's catching your shadow. Uh, and then beyond that. You need uh, to get your fill lighting and everything. Um, we've just got the mental ray image-based lighting. We're using um, that image, the same image, and plugging that into the image-based light. And, uh, and that pretty much does it. Um, if you don't have, again, these MIP um, mental ray shaders, so if you type in MIP and get nothing, or if you click on mental ray and you don't see MIP in here, it's going to be the camera map, card opacity, matte switch, or, or ray switch, matte shadow. These are going to be really important for this kind of thing. Um, you just paste in the Mel script, which I'll link again in the, in the description, and uh, then you restart Maya, and those will all pop up for you. Uh, thanks. I uh, hope this is helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.